Drift Island, the Iron Drift King podcast, hosted by Marcel Uli and Jacob Gettens. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Iron Drift King podcast. My name is Jacob. Uh, we've got uh, some special guests on here for this incredible episode that is brought to you by Parts 33. If you are looking for some parts, you know where to go. You can see the, the big background there behind Marcel. Uh, we'll make sure to leave some links down below. But uh, we have a special guest today, um, Fran Simon. Hopefully I got the pronunciation all right. Um, still working on my German, but uh, we'll get there. How, how are you doing, man? Pretty decent. Uh, thank you very much. I'm doing very well. I'm glad to be here. Glad to be part of uh, this uh, amazing podcast and uh, also be part of, of drifting in general. And uh, let, let's hope we can, we can um, discuss a couple of nice, interesting topics uh, today and uh, maybe, yeah, um, help uh, some more to, to change the world of drifting, especially in Germany. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that's more or less why, uh, why we're here, right? Just talk drifting, have a couple of different perspectives. And then obviously both of you, uh, being from Germany have a, a pretty good understanding. I mean, to be perfectly honest from my side, I don't, I don't know a ton about the history of drifting within Germany in particular. Um, you know, we, I feel like Europe in the eyes of, of North America just gets lumped together as like the history of drifting in Europe. And we don't very much break it down between yeah, countries. It's very, di very different than every country of Europe. So I think, yeah, uh, I think in Germany, we are a little, um, little behind of, uh, if, if I, I want to say it a little bit careful, but I think in Germany, we are a little bit behind and when it comes to drifting in Europe, uh, I think other countries like, uh, Poland, uh, Latvia, of course, uh, even France, mm -hmm. uh, Czech Republic, the Netherlands. Uh, I think they're all pretty much uh, in front of us when it comes to professional drifting and understanding what professional drifting is. Uh, so we have a lot to learn in Germany, um, and uh, it's 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 rough. It's been it's been a rough 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 time. It's really uh, not so easy uh, in Germany uh, when it comes to seat time, when it comes to sponsorships, uh, funding. Uh, lots, lots of stuff. So I think Germany is very different from the rest of Europe. I think, Marcel, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I to totally agree. I was just uh, today watching the uh, what was it? The first test, you know, from uh, Ben Hobson. Is it Ben Hobson? <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. watched it. Uh, yeah, and, uh, on, on his RTR Mustang, and, um, and 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 what what caught my ear or not my eye was you know when Warren was saying that. Yeah, the, the cars are ready for a ha for something like the highly professional motorsport series like Formula Drift, you know. And mm. as a German, I'm like, you know, it was it sounded so special. Even if I live that and I breathe and and live that sport, but uh. it is so not accepted as a highly professional motorsport in Germany, you know, uh, but in general public and. Uh, uh, and most of the most of the other professional motorsports yeah. in Germany, they don't even know drifting. It's super weird. After twenty years, it's uh, it's unbelievable, but it's a fact. And uh, and it, you know, I was like thinking, yeah, it actually is a professional motorsport. You know, like it's so weird that this is that this is feels real for me to hear as a German. You know, that I is even consider like, thinking about it. Is it just there's such like a a barrier in between it like i mean obviously things like open wheel racing or just a rally i mean all these different motorsports is like we in germany they just hold that to such a high regard and has such a long history that you're like oh until you've been around for 50 years like we're not even gonna consider you a, a, a highly regarded sport uh i think <laughs> yeah maybe maybe i think uh, i think uh, of, of course in germany the nurburgring you know the famous nordschleife and circuit racing mm -hmm. vln rcn all these classes dtm touring car racing whatever um are yeah it's it's motorsports that's been that has been around for many many years everybody knows it um it's 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 kind of like it's kind of like so drifting is social media and regular mm -hmm. motorsports is paper advertisement I think that's a very, very good comparison. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think this is a, is a very good way of putting it. Um, what, what we figured out in the last years in research, you know, how to grow Iron Drift King, how to get more Germans there and stuff, is that um, it's not, I don't think it's the acceptance that's missing anymore. It has been definitely the reason for a long time that it hasn't been growing properly. Um, a lot of people simply don't know it. They don't know it is existing and that is 
crazy. If you know, if some guy from some village in some you know remote area doesn't know that, it's one thing. But if professional motorsport teams don't know what drifting is, or that drifting is existing as a sport, uh, BMW test drivers, like people that very well should be aware of of that, and they are not aware. A lot of people don't even know that there are competitions. Yeah, in that sport, mm-hmm. and that is that is uh, that is real. I mean, of course, we live in a bubble, right? Because we 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 love that sport. We are we are huge fans of all of us, and um, and I don't, I don't want to judge all the time because, of course, if you love something very much, you think everyone you know also has to yeah. do that, and everyone has to be aware of every detail. That's of course bonkers. You know, that's 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 not reality, um, but it's it's still. It's still weird that I, I mean every major German car brand has been advertising their cars in the last five to ten years with drifting, with sideways. Even front wheel drive cars have been sliding around corners in their, you know, in their release videos or, or whatever when they when, when they had a new model in the market. So it, it's it's uh, unbelievable that uh, a lot of people still don't know that that is, uh, that it is existing. Dude, is it is it just like? Is it just because we're not talking about it enough? Like we talk about it internally a lot, right? Like, I mean, obviously being in the drifting culture, like all we do is talk about drifting. That's all I've been doing this entire off season. But for people who are like, like how often do you talk to your family who's not into drifting, like about drifting? Or are they just like, Hey, yeah, whatever. Like, is it, is it one of those that like culturally it's not appropriate to do that? And that's why it's not expanding out. (sighs) Good question. Um, It's a a, 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 a very valid question. So what what I what I heard recently was that I who was that? I think I talked about uh, with a company and with the marketing manager, you know, about a partnership for Ivan Drift King, and he was he was checking the uh, the web page, and he was saying, and that that's happening in Germany. Said yeah, because it doesn't look at all, you know, because the I don't want to talk down on any other championships in Germany and any, any other events, but mm-hmm. uh, the target always with Ivan Drift King was to set a new standard, right? And um, right. Um, yeah, I'm just saying it. And we did that. We 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 are we are at the at the top of the mountain when it comes to uh, to quality level and you know presentation in general. So uh, in, inside Germany and um, and a lot of people don't even know. I think that something like this is possible in Germany. I think this is where we're at. But in the same time, we see an increase in uh, ticket sales inside Germany. And that is fantastic. A a, a significant increase. Mm -hmm. I I think... um... In, in Germany, if you look at like, like Marcel and, and, and myself, we met about like, like I think it was like 10 years ago uh, at uh, Drift All Stars, German Drift GP at Lausitzring. Um, and if, if you look at the, the whole sport of drifting, if you really, really look at it and you think about that, it hasn't really changed much since, has it? Like, uh, you know, if you look, it's like it's been ten years. Like, if you, if you, yeah. I, I will sound like a, I will sound like a hater if I if I agree with you here. I, I, but I don't, I, well, it's, it's like don't get me wrong. Like, if, if you look at like you know, I lived like eleven years in Dubai and I just came from there. I did some practice there, and if I started in the Middle East. You know, um, back in the day, and if I look how far it has come since then to now, where we have drivers from there now entering. Um, Drift Masters as well, for example, um, and then the cars are like rocket ships, Samsonas, Winters, supercharged, 1,200 horsepower, full carbon fiber, crazy cars. Mm-hmm. Of course, yes, there is money. This is the main part because because obviously all this happy, all this fun costs money. But the problem here is that I think also that I want to call it we as the Germans have mm-hmm. done, I think, major mistakes in communicating what drifting is and, and and once again just my how myself said nicely i don't want to step on anyone's foot or sound cocky or whatever but to sum it up and it's a funny story i want to tell i just bought a rig like a big okay. 40 ton rig uh, for our nice. motorsport team um and i bought it from a from a dtm team right okay. um so they drive r8 gt3s and whatever um and and 
to get back to my sales point, when I told them, like, they said, okay, what series are you driving? I said, I'm drifting. What? And they didn't know drifting. And it's, and it's international. It's a team that drives internationally in, in a very high league, like DTM, you know, and, and, and GT3 cars. It's crazy. And then, and then they said, like, oh, I saw drifting is like so driving banged up E36s on the parking spots in wintertime uh, doing circles. <laughs> This is what, what and, and once again, I don't want to, I, mean, I started in East 36. I love East 36s. I still have one. I mm-hmm. love them to death. But the problem is that I think what has been communicated in Germany of what is drifting, it went, the communication was wrong, was wrong. I think people have a wrong idea about what it is because we did not show them more, even though we're trying. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like they don't know it exists. Just they just think so, it's like even they ask they ask like hey, you use special tires to spin more to have no grip and stuff. I said no, it's the opposite. You know? Yeah. So trust me, it's crazy. What you you bring up an interesting point with this and and it so it, it touches on a, a bunch of things that I know we want to get into. Which I mean we can deviate however we want from oh. here. Um, so directly comparing American culture, American culture is very much based on look at me, look at me, look at me, look at what I have, look what I do, look at all the things that I have, right? Um, looking at your uh, Instagram in particular, and, and obviously you're at a level of, of pretty good success when it comes to programs and being able to build out things. You're talking about building this rig. I also notice that you embrace more of that culture of check out the car. Like obviously it's part of your business and everything else you're doing. But you have a much more flashy social media presence, but then a lot of the drivers do that already. No offense, significantly higher level and yeah. no funding. And here is the thing. Here is the thing. That's why also some people um, are not very happy about that we are getting funding, right? I'll be honest with you. Um, like even mm-hmm. German drifting. But um, I, I'm, first, first and foremost, I'm 41 years old, so I'm a business owner. First of all, so uh, mm-hmm. I, every, every all the money I earn, I burn it in drifting. <laughs> but um, we, it. we've been we've been we've been trying to sell our program, you know, with good social media, YouTube, Instagram, because obviously we also get sponsoring requests for like other things to support football teams or whatever here in the region. And the first thing I ask him, okay, what do you bring to the table? Like a sponsor, he always wants exposure. You know, mm-hmm. and and he wants to he wants to be um, associated. His name should be associated with something he wants to be associated with. Like when I tell the guys, okay, look, when we back when we get our first sponsorship three years, four years, three years ago, four years ago, three years ago, uh, three years ago. Before that, it was all self funded. Um, the sponsor made me build a new car. You know, and don't get me yeah. wrong, I had a I had an E thirty six wide body rear mounted radiator, single turbo two J. You know, full uh, fiberglass body, nice car, right? Mm-hmm. But they said, you know what? If you want sponsoring from us, you go and build a new car. And then I built that E92, which I don't have to tell you how much it costs to build a car like this. So <laughs> if I think about it, like I, I got less sponsoring money than I spent building the car. You know what I mean? But it's, yeah, but it's the association with something that's professional. Like we talked about what Vaughn said about a professional race car team. And then we yes. talked about the perception of the sport of, you know, beat up E36s. Yes. It's, it's, there's a, there's a phrase, I don't know how, if this even translates of dress for the job you want, yeah. not the job you have. It does right? translate. And, exactly. Yes. And yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And, and, <laughs> and you know, for, for, for me, uh, as I said, it, it came from a, from a passion and I love cars. I did circuit racing before and I still go to the Nürburgring and all the stuff to do circuit racing, but, but drifting, drifting really, really caught me like this 30 or 45 seconds of pure rush just made me made me crazy and um you know i'm sure that there are there are uh, like better drivers than me in germany 100 percent because they have maybe more seat time they're 20 years younger or whatever right but we at least like try to bring something to the table right to 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 make it interesting for sponsors so and that's i, I that's what i try to also keep telling people like look don't get me wrong i don't want to like i don't want to tell you like, yeah, I actually want to tell you what you're doing wrong, but you don't have to get me wrong. I, I mean it in a good way because I want to support the sport. Like, I don't get anything with this. Yes, I get seat them, I have fun, but, you know, buying rigs, building cars, ordering parts for myself for, I don't want to say how many thousands of euros, you know, um, at the end, I'm losing money anyway. But I have fun and I love yeah. the sport and I want to build the sport. And that's what I, I get along with myself so well as well, because he also has a, has a passion of building the sport no matter what. 
right? And we want to show, look, this can be done. Like even here in Germany, we can have a nice team. We can have a nice car. We can have a nice team clothing. We can have a nice rig, a nice tent. We can look professional. You know, we, 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 we don't want to represent. And once again, I don't want to step on anyone's foot. We don't want to represent like coming really with, let's not call it E36, with some banged up 100-year-old rusty car, uh, right. sit on a, on, a, on a pile of beer or whatever. You know what I mean? And again, I respect that. But if you, if you, if you are that, do not expect sponsors to throw money at you. This is the whole yep. point, you know? And um, I also think that, uh, for example, uh, there are so many good drivers in Germany. I think if they would have more um, support of how to sell themselves and present a program, they could, could do better. Not amazing, because in Germany, we don't have these big fundings, but at least they could get some support. That's what I think. Now I spoke a lot. Sorry. I, I, no, I, I have uh, quickly something something to add that um, that also I I heard Ron saying today in that video. And like, and I said it to my wife. I said it's so unbelievable how he does that, and she didn't get my point. So hopefully you will get my point. <laughs> so what? Um, working with with partners. Not, don't let's not call them sponsors. They're partners, partners, right? It's it's yeah. an exchange of uh, goods and services, and uh, mm -hmm. so. Um, working with them is something you need to learn. It is very difficult to constantly. It's it's like it's like it's like a marriage, right? You need to constantly work on it, and you need to be sensitive. You need to uh, you need to do things before they're asked, right? Um, it helps a lot. What Ron did in this video, uh, he was explaining they didn't want to have just like Chelsea's car, you know, and then Ben in the car. So mm -hmm. uh, they had to create a different livery. And, uh, and obviously, Pennzoil, uh, as, as their main sponsor for, for that car, right, uh, they have a yellow background usually. And they didn't want to do that on that car. So they, um, so Pennzoil allowed them, you know, to, to, change, to change the design. And he didn't explain it even this long, but what he did in the video, he said that, hey, and big thanks to Pennzoil that they were, you know, flexible with, with the design here. This small detail of saying right. thank, thank you, you. Absolutely. for that, for that <laughs> it seems like a small thing, but it's a big thing for those big companies, right? It's their brand identity and, 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 uh, <laughs> uh, and, and that was, I absolutely loved when he did that because this is, I think that's the art form and that's why he's so good at that. This is so complicated. It's constantly like he's saying that, yeah, now I'm, uh, the band is already, or they're already on the way with the car to the, to the, to the racetrack. And I will now go in my Mustang RTR Mark II or something like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And, spec 5D. Yeah, spec 5D yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then I will put my, then I will put first gear and go down there. And then later he said that, so we will go now on track and burn some Nido tires. He's constantly, yeah. and that is absolutely perfect. And it never seems forced. It always feels no. natural. Natural, yeah. Uh, he, he's an absolute genius, in my in my opinion, when it comes to that. And uh, that was just, I was thinking like, yeah, man, this is, you need to learn that, right? It's, it's like swapping, you know, uh, swapping out what the product is for the brand name right like in the u.s it's like q-tips like nobody says cotton swabs they say q-tips exactly or yeah. you know tissues it's it's kleenex like you don't even call mm -hmm. it that yeah. uh there's part there's parts of america that don't even say like you know like pop like soda pop they don't say that they they literally just call it coke like it doesn't matter if you're getting something that's got lemon and lime in it they're like oh it's a lemon lime coke they refer to all pop as coke Okay, and that that comes down to a branding thing. Like Vaughn's talking about, I'm burning off nittos. Mm -hmm. You know what the nitto is? And, it is a tire. It. Yeah, but you just you just transfer yeah. that out, right? Like yeah. you, you, you could do it with anything, but you should be yeah. doing it with your your partners. And it doesn't feel like advertisement. Like it's so so no. in the back of your mind, right? Uh, and as you said, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll go out and burn some nittos, and it doesn't feel like you want you wanted to sell you some tires. No, tell you, you know not. what I mean? It's yeah. just no. so natural. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. But it's, those are all little points that add up yeah. at the end of the year when, you know, Vaughn's back in negotiations with Neto and they're like, well, how did Vaughn do this here? And they're like, well, he only ran two rounds. And it's like, okay, but like, what did this look like? Like, well, I remember how much he talked about this. I'm like, yeah. you just keep adding that up over exactly. and over again. And it's, it, it builds. Exactly. So I, I, I yeah. also think, um, and I just spoke to um, Frederico Sherifo uh, yesterday. 
um, we I have, love Fede. Yeah, yeah, he's a very yeah. uh, sweet guy. One of the sweetest guys I actually met uh, in a very long time, and uh, we uh, we we may have a common like project. Maybe I'm not sure if I can talk Ooh. about that, but um, anyway. So and we were talking about this as well, and and um, um, I think in Italy it was very similar when it came to to, to drifting back in the day and and and, and programs and sponsorships. And uh, another problem, what I think is that here I think we have a little bit about this mindset where it's cool to have a sticker on your car. Right? Yeah. And no no and, and, and the problem here yeah, much as laughing because yes. and the problem is um that some people um they like for example they will brand their whole car, let's say with a with an oil company or a tool company, and they'll get oil in return. So how do you want someone else who drives on a pro level or whatever go there and says, Hey, I'm also gonna brand my car, but please give me I don't know, 25,000 euros. And they say, why? Yeah. Because we just got the same for five yeah. gallons of oil. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, you, it's, it, that, that issue yeah. is not just within our sport, not just within Germany. That is, that is a, a, a problem in general that people don't value <laughs> themselves correctly. And where that stems from is us mm. not talking about sponsorship, not talking about how much we're charging or what the deliverables are or what that deal is like, because for some reason we feel like, Oh, if I say that, then everyone's going to know good because now some kid isn't going to go to that same oil sponsor that you've got and undercut you. Right. Exactly. And if they do, if they do undercut you, it's going to be by $500 or a thousand dollars, not for a case of oil. Yeah. Right. Where, you know, you, you, if, if somebody undercuts you basically for offering almost nothing, there's no way to defend that or, or negotiate with that. No. If somebody undercuts you for a thousand euros, then it's like, okay, cool. Well, what level is he at? Oh, he's yeah. here. Okay, well, I'm up here. So that's why it's a thousand euros more. Exactly. But, but yeah. But then again, you have to compete against the the the, the, the other motorsports. For example, we 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 had a relationship with with a good sponsor uh, who, who supported us for about uh, two years, which was cool. But then they backed off because of budget. Okay. But on the other hand, um, I'm not going to say exactly why, because it's going to be too obvious. On the other hand, they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in another motorsport that no one really cares about. Like, if I want to put it in a nice way. But, I mean, you could, it, it could just have been a much better sales tactic. Like, I mean, there's, there's I, I, don't, I don't know, obviously, I don't know the situation, but there, there's definitely different ways that it could go about. But... It it does come down to who's the better salesman, <laughs> like who can sell the program better, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and of course, also who is your counterpart, right? If you right. if you have a person that uh, is easily no, not easily, but you know can get excited about things, it's not just numbers, a lot of emotions. You know, if you're able to to speak passionately about what you're doing, there's a, of course a way higher chance, you know, of of landing that deal. Um, mm -hmm. And if you have a very traditional right. person sitting there, yeah. you know, then they will go maybe more with a more traditional motorsport where they where they know, um, okay, it, it's existing since sixty years, so it will not vanish in the next three, right? Yeah. It's but, um, yeah. But well, then, yeah. then 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 again, I think the setups of these other more common motorsports are better. So even the sponsors, they can get in, they can get lounges and nice buffets and hang out. And, you know, I think, I think it's also sometimes a little, little bit of personal preference of the people working in those company. That's how I feel sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I think that's well, reality. Yeah. That's Once again, reality, I don't want to step on anyone's uh, foot again, but Marcel, you know me, I always, I have my, my heart on my, on my tongue. Just, just, just say what you have to say, so, man. It's like, so, um, I, I think I think this is also like okay you know we got we we can have a much nicer environment there hang out a nice weekend have our catering our lounge and blah 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 and play with the big boys instead of going to to uh, to a drift event where uh, you know in Germany except Iron Drift King um, you don't have nice lounges with uh, you know you know what I mean so yeah I, I I agree with the personal thing but like it's oh. it's uh, I I tell this to to people and this is a free tip for anybody it's very easy to say no to a stranger it's very hard to say no to a friend yeah if you're friends with these people like yeah. it's you know if i you know realistically if i said to Marcel, listen buddy i'm gonna make a run I'm, i want to go drive in europe what do you think parts 33 and it, 
that's a very different conversation than if somebody mm. just on Instagram DMs parts 33 and goes, you should sponsor me. Those are, of course. And that person is probably a better driver than I am because I'm shit. But the chances of me getting the sponsorship of is course. much more likely because yeah. Marcel and I have a relationship. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm sorry. That's how it works, though. 100%. Like, the, the only thing that, that, that where you think about like budgeting, let's say a motor, let, let's say a season in a whatever circuit race car costs you about like 500,000 euros or 600,000. Yeah. And uh, if, if, I, if I would tell someone, look, if you sponsor us for a season, as an example, Right, and you get a team, you get a fully branded car, you get nice clothing, race suit, rig, fucking sorry, excuse my language. Yeah, no. Anything you can ever imagine. Like you, we look like a pro. Like we could go and drive GT3, right? And it's gonna cost you, yeah. As an example, hundred grand. Hmm. For me, it would be a no-brainer. Like, hey, why, why should I? Like, you know, I'm a business-minded person. Why should I spend five hundred here where everyone is? Okay. You know, I have I have the perfect argument for this, and <laughs> it, it, you might get mad. Go for it. If I came to if I came to you and said, "Do you want a five dollar hot dog or a one dollar hot dog?" Which one are you going to do? Good point. Good point. <laughs> Good point. But, but but yeah, very very valid valid point valid point. But that's but, that's how they look at it. They go, "What's wrong with the one hundred thousand dollar program? Why is it so cheap?" Mm, nah. No, I, uh, I I agree. I agree. That might not always be the case, Franz. But no, I know. I know. It's it's, just uh, me, it's definitely me there is <laughs> people good point. that there's there's definitely a lot of people who who wouldn't even question why it's uh, it's cheaper. You know, it's automatically mm -hmm. not good because it's cheaper because they're mm, used right. to that that they're used that that sponsorships are expensive. <laughs> You know, even if the return might be bad on those, but that's how, that's what They're it costs expensive. in those we've, high class in those. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. We've all done it, like choosing cheap cheap oil in your car. Why is it so cheap? Why yeah. would I like? It's you don't do any uh -huh. research. You don't look any deeper. You're just like, oh, yeah. this is a two dollar bottle, like liter yeah. of oil. Like, what's wrong with it? Yeah, that's mm. true. But but you see, if, if if I have to if I have to recall one of the conversations I had um, was like. Yeah, we're already spending so much money there, so we don't have budget anymore for something else. Right. Like where you no, know I, that that definitely happens. I think what that comes down to in a lot of cases is timing, and I think mm. that is yeah for sure. Um, I want I want to get to like a, a a whole thing on education, but because that's a whole other can of worms. But like most people, most drifters, <laughs> most you know, most people who are not us three don't truly understand how a, a business that is dealing in the millions, if not more, operates. They operate in quarters. They operate with budgets. Like, for example, brands that I'm working with now, we just finished Q1. You guys probably all, all know that. We're, we're in the early stages of Q2, right? You know this. For mm -hmm. a bunch of people listening, they're like, I have no idea what the hell you're talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. Yeah. What I'm doing now, I'm already looking at Q4, to understand what I need to do there. And by Q2, by the end of Q2 or end of Q3, and Q yep. is quarter, yep. I need to be setting my marketing budgets for next year. Yeah. At the end of, at the halfway through the year, I'm looking at what my marketing budget is going to be for next year. So people looking for sponsorships in October, you're six months too late. Oh, 100%. Yes. 100%. Yeah. We also, okay. we're, 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 we're also right Not right always, now. not always, but. I, I think I if think, you're looking at a hundred thousand dollars, you're probably six months too late. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Do you know? Do you <laughs> know what, what what I think? Why that is? I think, um, and and th this comes back to not aware of the of uh, the, the self worth. You know, like how much is is my program worth? How much I am worth? So a lot of especially drifters, I think, uh, in Central Europe, they wait how their year is going. Right, to create that. Yeah, yeah, I know it's wrong. I'm just yeah. saying that. But you know, they're, they're not. They're not. They're not aware of their of their own uh, market value at all. Yeah, and uh, and that's how they also sell themselves. They sell themselves very very badly because they're not aware. So they try to create value over the year to can say, hey, this year I had you know, and then, then the train has already left the station basically, mm -hmm. and um, and then you're asking kind of your I think a lot of guys are very careful, you know. They are not aware at all that uh, that they can that they can be uh, worth any money to anyone. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, possible. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think I, I look at it also in, in a way like um, I, I think motorsport is a business, hundred percent, and it's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, and and I look at it in a way um, that I, I mean, why do you buy a rig? Like for ten events a year, you know. I don't speak, yeah. like you know, but I bought it because we're preparing our program for next year. Where I also have a, as I said, we have a project with Federico where he's helping me. Which which project could you help me with? I mean, I don't want to spill so many beans, but um, uh, um, so so we 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 already want to show something that we can sell for next year to say, look, we have this, this, this. We're going to collect some some video material, some pictures. Hopefully, also with my with with the car I'm ri- driving right now, which we're rebuilding at the moment, it's still in pieces. <laughs> um, have some good results this season. Um, maybe, maybe even put a good result in Iron Drift King. I hope so. We'll see. But uh, mainly, it's for, for us. It's about. I tell you honestly. Um, we, yeah, we'd love to do some podiums for sure. I, I, I think I'm capable of doing it. Um, in the past, I always I, I ran a lot with 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 a with a handbrake because I was scared to break the car. Like we, mm. I never pushed 100. percent Like I would I would rather back off because in my mind, that's mm. all right. I'm at this door. Oh, I'm gonna hit him. It's gonna cost me twenty thousand euros. Like you know, so you back off, right? Um, right? So, so now I'm at the mindset where I think, you know what? Now this season, really have to push hard and you know just risk the car every single time you start, and try to do to do the impossible so we have we can prepare something for next year um, to, to to yeah to even to have some more support and do some crazy things, but also to support other people with what we're doing. Yeah, so. That's, Interesting question. I don't, as much as I very much want to ask you a ton of questions about mm-hmm. the Federico Sharifo mm-hmm. project, um, a general question with this. Sure. If everything well, worked out well, mm-hmm. when, how far out is that project? Like, I, I tell you honestly, I tell you honestly, and, I, and, and I'm always very open uh, about anything that's going on with us. Um, we have the car. I bought the car. I had a sponsor. Okay. He backed off last second. Like we had mm-hmm. someone who was supposed to sponsor, let's say, Around sixty percent of the of the general project, which was a lot, so I went I went ahead. I bought the car, I ordered parts, and you know, um, we, I'm working with uh, with with Adam Zaleski uh, on the cage. He'll do the cage for me here mm-hmm. in Rockland, for example, as well. Um, got some parts for Federico. Got in touch with him. Many stuff. Anyways, long long story short, we wanted to have that car running in about four to six weeks, but now. Right. Now, having, having or not having the funding we needed to, 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 to do, I had to decide because my pro car that I'm going to start competing in, the, well, we're going, to, we're going to drive the first time on the 27th of April. Okay. And um, it's still a long way to go. Ah, <laughs> and, three so, weeks, man. Yeah. Three weeks, 21 days. No I mean, I mean my, yeah. mechanic, my, my mechanic put the, the, the block together yesterday and the car is still uh, still complete in pieces. I mean, you know, Marcel, you sent me a bunch of stuff which just arrived. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, the car had two rough seasons, so we thought it's a good idea to refresh it. Um, so I had to make a choice. I said, okay, look, am I going to put everything I have in my Pro E92 and make it the best possible car I can have. And Marcel and I, was, we were just joking. Um, he said, told me like, uh, uh, now it's just about the driver. You have anything that you need. No pressure. Mm-hmm. Like, um, <laughs> so uh, do, do that or split the budget I have and put half of it into our new project. <laughs> so I decided to, to, to build the pro car back up again uh, to, to be ready to compete. And un- until we have proper funding for that new project, we're going to have to postpone that for next season. I, I guess, Un- unfortunately, one, unfortunately, interesting. Yeah, um, interesting. But it sounds like, and I, I guess maybe the point I was trying to prove even with the question is like, this is months and months and months of conversations. And, and although the sponsorship fell through, like this could be six months to a year before the project can, can even happen. And I think maybe some of the issues we run into with people looking for partnerships is they're like, they think it's going to happen now. And they're like, oh, I, it's October. I'm going to send this guy a message. It's going to, you know, by December, it'll be done. And it's like, listen, I, obviously I speak to a lot of drivers. It's, it, uh, it's basically all I'm doing now. And uh, there's a driver I'm speaking with right now. Formula Drift hasn't even started and they're picture. they're, They're basically putting together the program for next year. 
crap. Right? Like yes. it's that's what they're doing right now. They're like, cool, we're locked in for this year. This is a partner they don't even work with now, but they're 12 months ahead trying to plan for that going like if i can land this person i can do this thing and then i can do this 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 and this and that's how it's going to work the the thing is i I really get excited pretty fast so i i should have waited for the signature (laughs) right um i had a hand i had a handshake it it wasn't enough apparently Um, so I can relate to that. So I was like, you know, we were negotiating back and forth, okay, and then, then they said, okay, let's do it. Right. Uh, two days later, I called Federico, Federico, I bought the, I bought the car, I got it. <laughs> like, you know, and then it fell through. So um, at the end, it all depends. Honestly speaking, depends if if our business this this year, you know, we all need to earn money somehow. Uh, if if it runs well enough, we maybe have some spare cash to 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 build the project anyway. But mm-hmm. then I promised to myself, if anybody, once it's ready and it's going to be freaking cool, if anybody wants to come, it's going to be double the price. Right. Honestly, because, because at this yeah. point, I said, I'd rather put my, my own name and I must say, I put yours and I put everyone's name on it for free instead of giving it away for, for a small budget. If I had to pay everything up front, right? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I think that's the, that's the right attitude. Um, you know, I was when you were explaining about you know um, that you that you were buying a rig the, um, to to plan ahead also for the future, right? And, and to to have all those opportunities uh, possibly. I was thinking, I, I I'm hearing all those voices of people saying, "Yeah, but you have the money and you can do this." I'm like, yeah, because you have the mindset. That yes. you, you 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 can you can visualize, you know, the possible future for yourself. <laughs> so automatically you work to that point, and that is that's what people forget. Yes, not everyone can buy a rig. Uh, uh, that is that is a reality. That's true. Yes. But yes. this doesn't mean it can never happen. No, you have to work in uh, in certain steps, you know, uh, to to get there. And there is no book. No, there was actually books about that also, <laughs> right? Uh, how to do that, but um. But what I mean is like, if you cannot visualize that, if you cannot materialize that, that dream, that vision for yourself, how should anyone else, you know, exactly. you have to, you have to, um, my sister, you know, uh, she wanted to create a, uh, like a fashion brand. She's very good with designs and all that stuff. And, uh, um, and she and she was quite young when she wanted to do that, under twenty. And uh, and she was then complaining to me that yeah, uh, our parents they're not supporting me with this, you know. And I said that if you uh, don't believe enough in it, you know, you will never get there. You yes. cannot care what other people think about what you want to accomplish at effing all. This is uh, not possible because just because someone doesn't see your vision you know someone doesn't believe in your vision uh this this cannot be the reason for you not to do that you know you have to wake up and and wanting to do that and if it's 10 years away or one year away doesn't matter you know this needs to be something that comes very deep from inside i think we all can relate to that 100 percent. and i had i had the conversation just recently with someone where i said yeah but for you it's easy because you have the money so i said okay yeah. first first oh. of, i said first oh, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i said like oh. i said first and foremost everyone who knows me knows i don't come from a rich family but i come from a pretty normal family actually um and i built everything myself point number one so i'm very proud of that and i'm also not the youngest guy anymore i'm not 25 like I'm yeah, 41, that's true. Yeah, you're also you know, I'm, years ahead. Yeah. And mm-hmm. few years ahead. And, and, but then I said, you know what? Instead of buying a rig, I could have gone and buy an apartment and rent it yeah. out and have it paid in 15 years. No, yes. I went to yeah. buy a rig to support drifting. You know what I mean? So, so stupid. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. exactly. And of course, because, because I like it, you know, and then, uh, Marcel, you remember when I, when I told you it's so bad to have money in your account and it's just always gone, you want to make it, you want to have it gone, yeah. all the money I want to have gone. No, Story but, of my life. Exactly. <laughs> but, but um, you know, we didn't start like this. Like we started with a, yeah. with a, with a T5 VW van and an open trailer where we put plastic bags on my hood exit, right? So it doesn't rain in. Okay. So we came a long way as well. And people, <laughs> um, people, people forget that, you know? And um, yeah, I don't know. It's, we could it, do a lot better things with our money. I think, but whatever. It's it, one of the, like, the best and worst sayings is is when somebody says like it must be nice and 
it's it's tough because like you know i'm i'm in a, a a kind of a similar situation i'm not buying rigs or anything else but like you know i i obviously doing what i'm doing right now the work i'm doing with formula drift this year like it's it's a lot it's for me in my career it's an incredible step and, which is amazing you know, by there's the way people, thank you i i Wait. really appreciate it uh, yeah it, it's just like you know people are like oh that you know must be nice i'm like listen here's the part you didn't see you didn't see the 10 years of me making YouTube videos that no one watched. Hmm. You didn't see me like sleeping on floors of rented apartments so I could go shoot an FD event. You didn't <sighs> even even last year, like traveling to Iron Drift King, like not that it was a bad experience or anything or like it was work, but it was like I came so I could work harder so I could keep moving on right. in my career. Like I, I think I reached out to you guys and was like, I need to announce for you. You, you did. Yes. How do I make yes. it happen? Uh, right. Yes. No, Jacob, you got this all wrong. You were just lucky. <laughs> oh, you were, yeah. just, 100%. You yeah. were just lucky. Yeah. Right. I just woke up lucky and it all fell into my lap. But that's like, it. The, the other part with it though is, you know, uh, my wife who's, who's been with me for over 10 years, like she can attest, like, I was always like, oh, I'm going to go do this thing. I'm going to do this. I'd like, I'm going to, you know, whatever that thing was, I would do it. I even, uh, in an episode with Rome, who is going to be driving an Iron Drift King, I said to him, he's like, well, what's your goal? Like, where do you want to be? And I, and I didn't have to think about it. I know where I want to be in five years. I want to be doing something with F1. I want to be a, a commentator or present nice. something. That's, That's cool. Do, do I want to get yeah. out of drifting? No, I don't. I want to be in drifting forever, but I know now that I'm at where I'm at, I want to find what I need to work towards next. And for me, that's yeah, and, you know, in the next five years, I want to be doing F1. And now I'm Why quoting not? Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, if, if you don't have, if you don't have a vision, it's like, it's like a ship without a captain and you're just sailing yeah. in the sea, not knowing where uh, to go. So, yeah. so you have to have a vision where, or you have to see where you want to be in a couple of years. And for, for, for example, I said, okay, I know this year I want to, ha I want to be on some podium and I will be. I don't know how yet, but we will be, right? <laughs> um, three, four years ago, I said, man, my biggest dream is to have a race truck one day, right? That was my biggest dream, like, you know, come there to the event, you know, so nice. You can, you can invite the other teams, you know, come over, have a look, sit down, have a barbecue, whatever, you know? And, and, and we, we, we did that, but I always, I have the same mindset. Like, like I see, okay, I want to be there in, in two years, five years, you know? Yeah. And yes, they're going to be step backs and you're going to hit bumpy roads and, and everything. But, but I think that's the time where you have to like really, really push forward. Mm -hmm. We had so much bad luck last season with our car. Like, like the first time that car, like this, the alignment set up, the car was drivable in all honesty was the, was not the, that was, was the last event of the year. The last event of the year where, where the first time I said like, okay, you know what? I feel comfortable throwing this car towards the wall. <laughs> that was the last event of the year, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, we had so many like issues and problems and this and this, but I always kept like, you know, let's move forward, move forward. No, we're not going to stop. We're going we're gonna to continue. No, it's not going to hold us down. We're going to continue. And I have, thanks, thanks God, I have a very, very good team behind me. We're very small. We're not a big, big, big bunch of guys. I have one head, head mechanic. Big, uh, big, big, big regards to Tom. Hey, Tom, he's gonna watch this. Um, he's he's one of the like he's he's an insane guy. Like he told me that this morning. I said, "Don't worry, you'll be sitting in this car in three weeks." And I know I will. <laughs> like, you know, he's this kind of crazy. Like he changed my gearbox on an event in two hours by himself and stuff like that. So, and I'm very thankful to have good people like this because I wouldn't be able to do that all by myself. Right. And uh, yeah. that's why it, it, it's, it's, it's important that we all have the same vision, you know, where we want to be at some point. And uh, my team is the same. Like, you know, they always support me. They push me. My girlfriend, oh, my God, well, without her, I don't know where, where I would be. She always <laughs> like, whenever stuff, stuff goes bad, it doesn't happen. I get very emotional, very angry, like, oh, no, not again. We could have done this and whatever. And she always, she's always the, she's always calmed me down and puts you back into place where, where I'm supposed to be with my mindset. So that's very important. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think this, like, you know, we're, we're all in, in good spots in our lives. I mean, I don't want to speak for everybody. I mean, Marcel, I have no idea. Maybe your life's a shit show right now and I have no idea, but we're all in, in good spots. <laughs> don't get but... me started. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, very charming. But, you know, I, I, very charming. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think I think for a lot of people listening, listening, they might just be like, oh, well, yeah, you look where you guys are. But it's like, listen, just take a small bit of it. And like, yeah. even if it's just your drift car, like it would be really nice. You know, maybe you have a beat up E36 and you're like, Doesn't hey, what, matter. what would you like to have? Exactly. E, like you want to have an E92 or something? Cool. Mm. Work towards that. Find a way. Start looking for shells. Like one yes. will pop up. If you're not looking, you'll where never I, find where one. I live, it's 10 to 11 p.m. on a Saturday. Okay. What are you doing right now? And yeah. that's exactly. And that I think that yeah. is that is a very good example of that. Um the success of that podcast, the success of Iron Drift King, you know, uh, and uh, the improvement in the sport and, and the hopefully big impact we can have on it is way more important than for me now doing something else than this. Right? Ooh, and that is right now. I'm sorry. You could you could be out drinking, you could be out partying, yeah, you could be doing exactly. something. I, I could, yeah. could do that or just relax because I have been uh, 14 hours in the garage today oh, to, to do some other I'm stuff. Sure. So, um, but, <laughs> but, you know, I think that this dedication is, is highly, highly important. And uh, mm -hmm. and I think that everyone who, who got some su success, you know, if it's economical success, if it's athletic success, whatever, hopefully you can combine those. That's ideal. Um, I think you need to be highly motivated and that's always, and uh, even if it gets tough, you need to be able to motivate yourself again. And that is, um, I can tell you the last, the last five to six weeks in the Iron Drift King planning stage have been tough and, uh, and have been slowing down. You know, that's why you, everyone who, who follows the podcast, you know, that's, uh, it took now four weeks, I think to, to record um, the next one. And, uh, but now we are, we have already scheduled, uh, the next one. So that's good. But, uh, but this week, you know, it happened again that I was like, okay, we have to make this happen. And right away ideals came up and I got super excited um, about it. And like, this is, this, this ability is, is so crucial. You need to be able to get excited again and again and again and again about what you're doing and what you're aiming for. And if you cannot do that, if it's always just a burden, then, then just stop. Just stop and do something, something else, else that's actually cool for yeah. you because uh, you would just hate yourself because then it feels like a wasted time. Absolutely. You know? I, I agree. I agree. And, and, and one thing I want to add up to, to get back to the point in, in German drifting, um, and I yeah. want to really focus on that again, that I not neither myself or Marcelo, so, somebody else is against these banged up cars. No problem. Mm -hmm. if, if, if no. This is what you – this is – I mean – this, this is if this is what you want to do do that that's what we all did you know all, all good yeah right um and and yes not everyone have have has a budget and and all good but if you're for, for instance if you're still young and you get into the sport yeah then i call it like brand awareness make people aware of yourself if you don't have the budget drive like a madman you know do something crazy use your social media um reach out to people you know, um, like whatever, like for example, me and myself, we have a good social media. I have no problem tagging people, mentioning people, doing videos, to, you know what I mean? And I'm always mm -hmm. trying to communicate like, look, we're not against you. We're with you. You know what I mean? We, we, we want to support you. We want to show the world what you can become mm -hmm. at some point, you know? But I think the mindset in Germany is, and, and once again, I speak honest, honest about it and very straight, they always think you're against them. Like, oh no, with this guy, and you know, he has yeah, this yeah, and he has that, uh, yeah. and uh, why so, he has this and this, and I'm a much better driver, but she's got a much better car. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, so no. It's a very negative mindset, and yes, that's uh, and, and it's so know. it's it's toxic. It's so toxic, and I don't understand why. It's like that's childish. Like you know, I don't I don't know why everyone is just like, oh, you know. I I don't get somebody it. Somebody said it the other day, and I God, I wish I remember who it was, but they they called. Uh, American society toxic positivity where it's it's almost the opposite issue that they're like always so pushing ahead of like yeah. I'm awesome this is awesome this is great like it becomes its own problem because people yeah. get very entitled very quickly yeah, yeah. And, and get a little too big for their britches but like yeah it, it don't don't use it as a negative if somebody else has something better or a better situation than you instead of like looking at it and being like yeah screw that guy he's got something like be like cool I'm going to go make friends with them and be like, hey, dude, how did you get here? Exactly. What did you do, right? Exactly. Like, you know, if yeah. somebody has something you want, make friends with them and be like, hey, can you just 
like what advice can you give me to exactly. get to this point? Exactly. Instead of being like, oh, I'm just going to beat him. Like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I said, it's, it, I think in Germany, it's, it's exactly the opposite of, of, of the States. It's toxic negativity. Like mm. people in general, I think in a, in, a, in a bad mood and it just reflects and, <laughs> and shows also in, in this in this sport. And, and I, I never understood that. Right, you know, um, right. It's, but it's in general in Germany. Like, for example, if you have, if you, if you, if you are out there and you drive an expensive car, you're almost an outlaw. People hate on you. Like, oh, this can't be legal. He must be a drug dealer. Where has he? You know, why is he driving this car? Why I'm not? You know, and it's it's always it's this, this negativity. Like they don't look behind behind this behind the scenes of why it has been that way. What did he do? What I didn't do, or whatever. Right, and I think it I think it translates in, uh, also in, in in the sport. Like instead of capturing all this, instead of putting out all this negativity, just capture it and turn it into positivity and say, hey, man, what could I do that I, 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 I get a step ahead of myself or, or get a step further than, than I am now? Like um, mm-hmm. I, had this, I had this conversation about two years ago with someone who got very upset, you know, um, because I said, I said, look, in all my respect, you can't have a shit box, right? And go to a company and ask them for a hundred grand. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't yeah. work like that, and this and and this is why they get they get uh, or a fifty grand or twenty grand or whatever, right? And 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 they get they back off, and then now, it's a, a, another let, let's say um, driver or anyone represents a program. They say ah, I'm not even going to look at that. Yeah, yeah, you've spoiled you've spoiled the water at that point. Exactly, and I, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, happened a lot. Happened you, know, you, a lot. you can't yeah. Yeah. you can't do that. You, you can't. And he got upset. I said, man, I don't mean it in the wrong way. Right. It's, yeah. it's just I wish you. And if, 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 if it's me, if you get whatever you want, you know, I'll be very happy for you. Right. But you can't do it that way because it's not going to work. So don't be upset why it didn't work. Yeah. It, so a couple a couple of points I want to touch on. One that's that's sort of interesting. Um, going back to like the, the negativity of it. So if you if you look at like music, if you look at how music has changed over over the decades, Whatever is popular is a, almost a direct reflection of how society is doing. Sometimes it's economical. Sometimes it has things to do with war. But it's not what you would necessarily think. Because you would think, well, realistically, when there's really bad economical things going on in a country, I mean, I, I, like I said, I'm going to model this more off the U.S., the music is very happy because people want happiness. Whereas when things are really good economically, the music is, is very negative. And, and it's, it's because like, oh, everybody's like, there's too much good going on. The, the music that catches on and becomes popular is actually very negative music. So I'm kind of curious because I, I, I know zero about German economics, but like, I'm curious if, if that <laughs> is where the case comes from is like, if things were economically pretty good and people just become negative because they're, they're looking for negative or it's the opposite. It's like, hey, things suck. So everybody sucks. <sighs> Marcel. I tell you, I, 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 I cannot tell you much about uh, about the state of German economics, and I'll tell you why. Okay, it's bad. Okay, like it's everywhere. <laughs> the, the, yeah. But but why I can't go in detail is I don't really care because mm. it doesn't change the fact that I want to reach what I want to reach. I right. just keep on going it doesn't matter to me and if the liter of fuel costs 10 euros that would be super crap then i have to make more money i don't care the this yeah. this cannot limit my 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 yeah. dreams you know yeah, if i constantly if i constantly um uh, get influenced by by outside influences that are getting worse and worse man then i can just stop trying mm, lot of, lot of it's, 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 yeah it's yeah. Look, well, nothing got better the last 20 years. Like, it okay. doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't even know if anything got better the last 100 years. You know, <laughs> if you really look, for real. Yeah. You know, and um, we are watching a Netflix, no, uh, Prime, I think Amazon Prime show, um, open for sponsorships, Amazon. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> I'm here too. That was so good. Yeah. That was so and, good. Um, and it, it's uh, it's play, it plays in the 80s, right? Okay. And they were going to an open house to to check a house. The house it was like uh, in, in square meter. I think square foot is is it? 
I think 3. 3. 700 or something square foot, okay. 800 square yeah. foot. Square meter and square foot is divided by three approximately, right? Yeah, 3.3. Mm -hmm. 3. Yeah. Yeah. So, so square meters is like two, 200, 220. So quite a big house, right? And the house was $37,000 asking price, you know? Yeah. And, and this is not so long ago. It is yeah. not so long ago that this, that, you know, that the prices were that, that low. And um, if, if, my, if I would base my life and what I want from it on the fact that uh, how good politics are, how good economic are, is how expensive something is, I would get absolutely nowhere. I really, yeah. I should well, care more just out of, you know, as a business owner and out of interest and stuff, I anyhow have to push forward. This doesn't change the fact, you know. Uh, yeah. it's, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into this. I don't want to fill my head with all this negativity. Yeah, and politics, this and that. Man, it doesn't matter for me well, because I will not change. No matter who I vote, Urban, please hate me for what I'm saying now. No matter who I vote, it will not change the Ooh. fact that I have to push very, very, very hard yeah. to get what mm -hmm. I want from life and uh, yeah. and from business and from whatever. You know, it's uh, yeah. we have been it's quite still, derailing yeah. now from drifting here. Yeah, that's <laughs> but I was just, uh, just uh, to say, I was just to say that. But, but but I think it's very important to to understand that if your mentality is not not at the level where you really, really want to make it happen. You yeah. know, you will not make it happen. You need to, you need to create a value and your dedication, mm -hmm. your dedication is your biggest asset in my opinion, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because if you're dedicated enough to make uh, something happen, you will make it happen. And, and of course you need to be very good in selling that fact. But, you but if to... you can, if, if someone will understand, just a second, Franz. Yeah, sure. But if if you can make sure someone understands your your determination, you know, and your willpower, they will just give you what you need because they know, okay, no matter what, this person will make it work. Right. What and that's you, um, what do you think? There are a couple of drivers in the past couple of years that have competed, um, let's say worldwide. Mm -hmm. They're really like as far as you can, of course know from okay. outside they spent everything they had in drifting mm -hmm. but okay. didn't get anywhere what do you think why didn't that happen what, would, you, would you like to uh, like, 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 no 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 but but there they are no couple of like people where where you, i don't want to say like you know but you hear and you talk to them and mm -hmm. maybe you, you talk to some friends or whatever who spent a lot of money sold their houses car whatever but they didn't make it like, like, but why didn't oh, they yeah, make okay. it? Hmm. Weren't they, weren't they hmm. good enough? Didn't they have the right mindset? Or why didn't, they? like, this is something where I'm asking myself, and honestly, you know, I was speaking to my girlfriend about this the other day, where I said, like, fuck, what if we do all this, and we spend all this money and everything, and at the end, we're not getting where we want to be? Like, what, what, what then? Like, we, I we, have we, a, I have an, I have an idea, but I, I would like to hear Jacob first. Well, yeah. uh, I mean, I think, I think it's tough. I think there's a lot of, different reasons why that can happen. I do think a lot of it is is a lack of planning. I, I can think of some very specific examples of, of that situation. We don't want to call names. Both in the US, both global. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm not going to, trust me. Um, I, don't need, I, I don't need people showing up in my house. Mm -hmm. But the situations that I've seen where that's happened, it, it, it usually comes down to planning um, or not having somebody to kind of like to counteract you. Mm. To, to bring you down to earth to like be like hey i get that you have the passion but um you know it, it's like a hammer and a chisel right like if you a hammer a, a basically a, a hammer without a chisel just doesn't doesn't carve anything out you need to have a a, a point you need to have something sharp to start chiseling away at what you want it to be mm -hmm. so somebody who just has a hammer and just spending money and beating the shit out of a rock is never going to make a statue mm -hmm. you need to have something to focus that effort to a point and most of the time it's people who don't they don't have somebody who tells them no or doesn't have somebody that goes hey have you thought about this or have somebody to that's that's going to make them think Mm -hmm. and, and that's usually where I see that fall apart. I have a different. I, I have a different explanation. Um, okay. Because it, it happened to myself just recently. So 
we have the opportunity for Iron Drift King to do something really, really cool. And um, and I had a, a plan mapped out, okay, to make that happen. Mm-hmm. And I had everything riding on that one plan. And it turned out that this, um, I cannot say what it is, but wait, uh, it turned out that to make that happen, it would take me until basically the day when Iron Drift King is happening. And I still don't know if it will work, right? Mm-hmm. So um, so I abandoned that, you know, and I and I wrote that contact and I said, that, hey, I, I think we cannot make it happen. It's mm. it, it the, the the risk the risk uh is too big that it that it doesn't happen and a lot of other things would you know okay. fall behind wow. or uh, um it would be plain wrong to to pursue this without knowing it will work okay just mm. I will put it like this I, I will at yeah. some point hopefully be able to explain what I talk about here and uh and that person didn't give up. That person mm. didn't say, yeah, okay, then then we cannot do it, right? That person was saying, yeah, but what about this? And in that, and just because that person didn't give up, that <laughs> what, what he or she wrote doesn't <laughs> matter. It just mattered that that person didn't give up. And in this mm. moment, my brain was, huh, yeah, of course, I can make that happen five other ways. And the last three months, I tried to focus so hard on this one single plan that I had because it would have been so perfect. You know, it would have ticked lots of boxes. But um, I didn't even consider looking left or right. And in, in this moment, I realized I just took my phone and wrote a message to someone and he's He's considering it. And it took two WhatsApp messages, you know, and uh, three months of crazy planning, you know, leading into nothing. And then it took two WhatsApp messages to have it maybe done, you know, on Monday or Tuesday next week. So, and that's, and in this moment, I realized, I got very, I got very angry to myself. and And I realized that, man, I have to, sometimes I have to step backwards, you know, out of myself to see, okay, this this cannot be the only road, right? If this road mm. doesn't lead anywhere, it doesn't mean it's the end of it. But I, I almost I basically gave up, you know. Mm. I basically gave up, and now I there's a thousand ways to get something done, in my opinion. Well, and I okay. think, um, and I think the the drivers or teams that didn't go anywhere with all the money they have put there, with all the risk they were taking, I think they have been focusing too much on this one ideal scenario that they thought is going to happen. Mm. And if this mm. is not happening and you got everything riding on this and you have been years and years and years pushing in this direction, mm. you might lose. If you win, you win big, right? Mm. But you, you, the chance of losing is way higher. I think you need to be open for I'm sorry, you need to be open for, for other possibilities and opportunities. And that's, mm. um, that's something a lot of people forget. And it takes a very special way of thinking to, to like, oh yeah, or maybe this, or maybe that, you know, this is uh, a lot of people don't have that. Mm. I think they, they make that one perfect plan. And if this doesn't work, it didn't work. Right. Um, but it would have worked in 10 yeah. other ways. And this is, uh, just my example, I mm. think is, uh, is a good example for the for for failing, you know, just because you thought it has to happen in this way, mm. and it didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's interesting. It might, it I might be wrong, but uh, no, it's, because it just it's recently about, happened to me, I was thinking. Well, I think that's. I think it's just going with the momentum and just deviating, <clears throat> right? It's not you didn't fail. Like that idea didn't fail. Just <clears throat> what your end result. Yeah. was changed right i mean similar to friends like you might have this idea you want to win this championship and completely not think about a different series altogether yeah. or a different vehicle or, or something yeah. so it's like okay maybe you didn't win this thing but if you keep pursuing or pushing yeah. you know something else pops up and you're like oh yeah. i didn't go here but i'm just gonna i'm gonna take a le- road's closed i'm gonna take a left and holy shit, this yeah. place is better than where I wanted to originally. Go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, in general, when it comes, to, if you get back to drifting again, um, in, yeah. in, in general, I think. Uh, 
Um, no, in general, in general, I think um, the, the mindset I, I have at the moment is like, I just going to enjoy every second of it. Um, I just got to stand on the starting line and put my visor down, be my word and just drive and enjoy. And I don't even want to put that much pressure on myself. And I learned that actually, um, in the, I was uh, uh, two months in Dubai. I lived in, the, in, in Dubai for 11 years. Um, and I moved back to Germany in 2017 and where now everyone was ice drifting and everything. I went to Dubai and I bought myself with a 370 there, like stock engines, 370, um, with a mm -hmm. hydraulic handbrake and some knuckles and that's it. Um, and the nice thing there is, and now, now, now listen carefully in two months, I had more seat time on that 370 than I had on my pro car uh -huh. in a year. Mm -hmm. That's crazy because that's another problem we have in Germany. You can't practice anywhere. The only seat time you have, or well, must I? We talked about that in in, in uh, about um, um, drift masters as well. The only seat time you have is pretty much on the event and the practice yeah. you may have. Like mm -hmm. all the race tracks don't want drifters. They don't want smoke. They don't want noise. All the stuff, you know, um, on, on big events where you have drifting parallel with circuit racing, the circuit racers complain, we can't see the track because in the paddock, the drifters make so much smoke. <laughs> so this, ha this, hap this yeah, happened. Yeah. This happened. We yes. had to stop. We yeah. had to stop drifting uh, in some corner yeah. because this, the circuit racing that was close, you know, there was a track that could be separated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were complaining mm. that in one corner mm. they had tire smoke and I couldn't see. Well. Couldn't see. So and I, uh, it's, it's a big problem. Bro, so the chase. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's the nice thing about the UAE. Um, you can you can pretty much drive every week, every week at mm. least twice, at least. You know, on on two different tracks. Well, they don't have many tracks because there's only like a um, like an old uh, go karting track where you can have all the drift nights where you can practice. But people take their pro cars. They have a grassroots championship. Um, um, shoot out to Yusuf, who's uh, uh, the guy from Drift Home in the UAE. Um, so they have nice stuff. Then there's Emirates Drift Championship. Well, you only have Yas Marina, uh, VDA. Now mm -hmm. they don't allow them there on the track anymore. Back in the day, we used to be allowed to drive on the F1 track. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like my first drift, e yeah, yeah, my first drift event ever. Well, my first time driving my Pro E36. Well, actually, first time drifting. In any kind of profession on a racetrack, <laughs> was was on a was on a on, on a competition on Yas Marina. So the first time I pulled a handbrake in drift car was uh, in third gear. It was interesting. Um, that night I did crash in top four. Um, <laughs> I, I hit a, I hit I hit a F one barrier sideways. Thanks God. Um, but in top in top four, it's a great yeah, yeah, time yeah. to crash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, was, I, was, I mean, I'd be okay I was better than in top thirty two, <laughs> right? So, I, was yeah. getting, I was getting too excited. Um, so anyway, uh, to get back to the point, so um, there's a lot of you can have a lot of seat time there in the UAE. You can have a lot of seat time, and when where it also gets back to budget, of course, because tires, petrol, all this kind of stuff, you know, you have to pay for that, right? And um, as we all know, especially in drifting, you know, seat time and myself, I get, I don't get enough seat time at all, right? Um, but seat time, seat time is the key. And to get back to the point, the, the, this two months I spent there, I drove, I got so much seat time that now I have a mindset where I can get into my car and say, man, I think now it's going to be the first time ever I'm really going to drive that car as hard as I can. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't care transitioning at 370, taking my front bumper off. I didn't care mm. uh, getting my door banged uh, by some of the really, really good pro guys over there. I didn't care banging someone else's door, right? So it was on dry, um, on a dry circuit, not slow, fast, you know, third gear transitions and stuff like that. So I didn't, I didn't care about that. And I think I needed that to learn to not to care, to get in the car and drive. You know, um, and that, that taught yeah. me a lot. And this is what we're also missing here in Germany, because if you have practice events, it's only in the wet and you're driving your missile, pretty much. We have just, to be factual correct, we have one track that uh, you can rent very often also, 
but it's of course not. Ah, yeah. I know what you not mean. In, not in a, uh, uh, not in a great condition. You know, <laughs> um, it's called Alstedt. You yes. don't need to uh, hide right. names here. There's absolutely no reason. Uh, a lot of there's lots of grassroots drifting. There's a lot of guys who pract uh, go practicing, but of course the condition is not ideal. Right, yeah. but it is cheap and it is available and it is possible. Um, but to practice with yourself, uh, we just talked about that with other guys in the past weeks. To practice with yourself is not exactly helpful. No, if you can get a feeling for your car, but you need to practice with other guys on your level, ideally better than yourself yes you know yeah. to actually learn something and that is uh, a lot of people forget that a lot of people yeah. forget that um you have absolutely no yeah. reference point the same thing is if you practice to drive close to walls without a track uh, on a track without walls i'm not so sure how <laughs> how that actually yeah. works it's just, it's almost impossible because yeah. the the intimidating factor behind driving close to a concrete wall very close yeah. very fast yeah. close with with yeah. cones and stuff, yeah, yes. it's not, it'll never no. be the same. You yeah. always know, yeah. you always know, okay, I maybe crack, you know, my glass fiber wow. or carbon fiber a little bit, but that, but that's that's the worst that can happen, right? If I if I run over some yeah. cones, um, but mm -hmm. if you know that wall doesn't go anywhere, very different stories. So. <laughs> I think, I think, I think that's that's a good point, and also a good point is to practice with people better than you. Um, when I got that 370, the first practice night, um, I, I, I pretty much practiced the whole night with the uh, Nasser Al Halbarli. He's going to compete now in Driftmasters. Mm -hmm. um, very, very, very good driver. And I learned in one evening, I learned so much about myself and from myself. That was unbelievable. Like, like with someone to drive with someone who you can really, like I knew he knew how to drive. So I could like throw it in and, you know, go get close and transition and stuff. And that practice was like worth like every single penny. That, that 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 car cost to me, right? To, to do that, um, and the same thing is I actually entered the Emirates Drift Championship with that 370 missile car. Um, I got until top eight though, um, and it was just intimidating driving that stock VQ and having like supercharged 1200 horsepower superchargers screaming in my door, like, whoa, whoa, and I'm like, oh my god, what am I going to do now, right? But it was it was a very good experience getting. Taking a knife to a gunfight was really good. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, and it'll teach you. Teach you how to fight well. That's for sure. Exactly. And and um, this is another thing. There, of course, in the UAE, it's crazy. You get to a practice night and everybody is unloading their HGK or fully HGK Boss S fourteen thirteen supercharged twin turbo Samsung two hundred fifty thousand dollar car, and yeah. it's absolute insane. Like. Not really the level of cars, but also some of the level of driving that people have evolved there. Um, I think Ahmed Daham mm -hmm. is a name everyone knows. He's been around for a very long time, a very, very good driver. Um, and uh, he was always, like, he was unbeatable. He was the James Dean of the Middle East, I think I want to call it. So so if she looks at <laughs> that, he'll, he'll be laughing. Um, but, some, but then many guys came nowadays um, there who evolved within two to three years to amazing drivers, but why? Of course, they have the funding and they can, they have seat time, seat time, seat time, seat time. So the level of drifting there, I think we would need here in Germany another 25 years to evolve what they evolve in five years. It's crazy. And, uh, the, and the workshops as well and, and the, the build quality, yeah, it's the, unbelievable. <laughs> crazy. The I, money I, part's hard to get over, but I know what you're I, saying. I'm usually also very very critic uh, or a big critic of of the the German drift scene uh, development right over over the past 20 years but I have to say I think the biggest issue that uh, German drivers have is you have to you have to look up in order to get better but if you always just look down you know because you don't want to look up because that makes you feel small right you you will not get there you need to get that knowledge and uh mm -hmm. i think and i cannot i cannot of course not quote every german driver i cannot say that is that is stereotypical or what but uh it happened a lot when i was still driving it's now i will figure that out for myself 
-hmm. you know i will i'm not asking because that's weird yeah. you know i don't want that they that they think i'm a, i'm a fanboy i man i can just say um a lot of the absolute top guys in uh, on this planet are practicing with someone right with people mm -hmm. that some people not even have heard of we uh and i and i've seen messages from fd drivers multiple champions right writing to those guys and say hey because of you because of your input you know i'm seeing drifting from another uh, from another level now you know from another point of view and um i kind of had to relearn drifting and, yeah, and I know look, exactly what message this is because I saw yeah, the same one. Okay, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. You, you know, and um, and that just shows you're never too good to learn more. And if no. this is something that you cannot accept for yourself, you know, that you have to ask someone who is better than you, maybe invest some money into into practicing with those well, people, you know, then you will not get there. It, man, who, yeah. whoever got better with I, just himself, it's impossible. No, you have I, to practice with someone who's great. Another thing is we spoke about this recently, Marcel, and, and I, I, I did get his number, by the way, if you know what I'm talking about, um, yeah. where we're we talking about alignment and suspension setup. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly speaking, in this, in, in, I don't want to say we're amateurs because that would be, wouldn't be nice towards us, but... I always said, look, it would be really nice to have someone who really knows what he's doing. Not only maybe set up my car. Everyone's driving mm -hmm. style is different. I understand that, right? Um, and maybe even drive it. Like, um, I give you an example. I, I said earlier that the first time I could drive my car properly uh, was the last event of last season. But that was only because I got someone's alignment set up who is a, <laughs> like a who's a very, very good driver. Yeah, um, probably one of the greatest uh, in, in the world. And we we did the changes. And I remember exactly, like, I did my first run. And I, I was on the phone with my, with, with my mechanic. I was like, Tom, this is, a this is something else now. It's a different car. Like, unbelievable. What did we do all season? Yeah. You know, that was... I, so I alluded to it earlier, and I'm glad we got to this point. And... and I guess like the overarching title is sure. education, yeah. right? Um, so in, in the US, I can point to probably five or six regions that have developed some incredible drivers. And at the core of all of those regions um, is usually one to two people mm -hmm. who have made it their entire mm -hmm. goal and career to educate people in drifting. I can I can point to Reese Marin, who has been on here, who... I mean, obviously, as a drifting instructor, but like you can go through the pedigree of drivers that have come from his tutelage. You can look at Aaron Lousy coming out of Texas, the Lone Star Drift Program. You can uh, you can look in the Northeast at Pat's Acres and Chelsea Denofa, what he did there. You can look right now in LA and what Jeff Jones is doing. But you always find that there is somebody that has just taken taken it and gone. I need to teach. I need to educate. And the expansion, so I can take. Uh, Let's take uh, Aaron Lousy from, from Lone Star Drift as an example. Um, because I, when I really got into drifting is kind of when he was very much pushing this. And this hopefully will solve a lot of maybe the issues that we're seeing in Germany. Is So Aaron gets into it, becomes a very, very vocal figure in drifting. Not a lot of people agree with how he communicates, which is fine. But he makes it his goal to educate drivers in sponsorship, car setup, etiquette, um, what the car looks like, like everything in drifting. He just dumps all of his opinions on the drivers at every single event. He adds courses. You can show up early. You can like learn from him, that kind of stuff. And what happened in Texas in particular was they started driving in certain areas, like let's, let's say parking lots and everybody got really, really good, but all the drivers were very well behaved. They drove incredibly well. Their cars look good and they were all getting sponsors and then what ended up happening were he would pitch tracks and be like, hey, this is my group of drivers. Please come out. You know, the track owners come out to one of the events. Come see what we do. And then next thing you know, they're driving at world class facilities and we're seeing incredible drivers coming out of those programs. Lake Erie Speedway is it's, it's a track that I'm very uh, close to. Similar thing there. When I first started helping them out with marketing, you know, the, the events were busy, but it wasn't crazy. 
now they have uh, three or four three-day events with 180 drivers at each event. It's selling out in minutes. Like it's a problem. There's not enough tickets. And that became a development thing. They do drifting schools there in between every event. They have a tiered program where you're educated to get up there. There's education going on. And now in that area, I think they have three drivers that came out of that program that are in prospect this year. It, it's an education thing. Yeah, I mean, we need at, to yes. teach people. Look at the small little yes. town in Ireland somewhere. Like, you there know, you go. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean yeah. That's that's, that's well, uh, unbelievable. And and that's one, yeah, it's one, so one, one, one at, street and three three workout class drivers. Like what? Three and another one coming out of there. Yes, there's yeah. another kid that literally lives across from James. That's about to be a Unbe- world, like, unbelievable. He'll be a world champion in four years. Uh, unbelievable. And that's yes, because yes. they shared knowledge. <laughs> yes, and and that that's yes. yes. That that's the thing. Like I, I also said the same thing. I said, man, I said, I'm imagining like someone is get, like when we we were driving the setup. We well, whatever setup it was, we were driving before. Um, yeah. I was like, man, guess if someone gets has got ha, would have gotten in that car like a pro driver, he probably would have said, why am I driving this thing? Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Because the change from like the car drives by itself, or like he almost, you know, when I looked yeah. at my onboard footage. The whole season was like, oh my God, it's like you're, you're fighting with the car, like you have a horse and you try not to die, right? And then, and then you look at the footage with the, with the new alignment setup, and the car's like, it's just like that, and it's yeah, like that, and it's amazing. You're driving with your right foot. <laughs> exactly. And, and now with the, um, uh, with the changing also a couple of components, can, can I say it, Marcel? I don't know if it's allowed here to have some... What we're yes, using, uh, of course. Of okay, course. Now, 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 okay, now we're, we're, uh, we, we swapped out our suspension. We're going to fuel suspension. So it just arrived okay. a couple of days ago. Got it from Marcel. Nice. Um, Coyote. Um, and then, of course, Wisefab. I've been running in this, I've been running a different, different company before. So now we change, we're changing everything to Wisefab front and rear. So the whole, whole thing. And uh, hopefully, we're going to get a good alignment set up in. And then I'm really curious to find out how it's going to drive. Um, probably it's going to be a different level again. So we'll see. But that's also the humility of going, I don't know everything. No. I need, like, there's a problem and I've tried to fix it. I can't fix it. Yeah. I need to talk to somebody who knows more than I do. Exactly. To, to help get it fixed. Exactly. You is, have to have that humility. And there's no uh, shame in that either, I think. Many no, people are, no, there's no, no, no. Like, no. I, like, I, I even told myself, I said, like, I don't know what to do. Like, tell me, help yeah. me. Like, what and, can and, I do? That is, that is perfectly fine, you know? And we, we at Parts 23, what we do, um, we also I, I called I called Wisefab right because they do field suspension uh, in Europe also, and you know and I just talked to them. I talked about uh, Francis' setup exactly what he has, you know, right? And and we talked like 25, 30 minutes, you know, about the perfect setup for him, what 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 springs and and what makes sense, and you know, and all that. And and, and I can I can forward that to my customers, right? Mm-hmm. But they they get direct knowledge because of course. We have experience, you know, from all those years, but sometimes I, I also want to make really sure, you know, what the customer gets is absolutely pinpoint perfect for 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 him or her, and um, and it's and it's great that those companies exist, you know, and you cannot be shy of calling them and ask for the knowledge. That is their business, you know. They yeah. make their money with their expertise. So yes, and then if you look at the, like uh, we don't want to do too much marketing, but we we, we got got the stuff out, you know, and my mechanics like man, this is really nice stuff. Like like you wanted to take it home and sleep with it, right? So yeah. you no, know, because if you appreciate the technology behind it and the workmanship that has been put into it and the 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 the, the knowledge in mind. It's, it's great stuff. So we'll see. I mean, um, I hope it's going to be, well, I, I, I'm sure it's going to be a much better car um, this season uh, in about 20 days when it's the car again, at least hopefully. Um, sure. So yeah, interesting. But uh, knowledge, knowledge is a thing. So we're going to yeah. fi- find our setup again, uh, talk to some people and uh, we'll see what happens. That's yeah. good. I, yeah, I think, I think the call out for anybody listening is like, if you like, don't, don't hold anything back. You're not doing anything. You're not benefiting anybody. Like I, I even just with some of my rants about marketing and like how the inner worlds of marketing works. Like yeah. I've had people like, Oh man, you're giving away these secrets. I'm like, yeah. good, good. I want to, like, Absolutely. I want, yeah. I want people to know. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I another thing yeah. is I ranted so much about German drifting. So I want to say something nice about it as well. So people don't hate me that much. Um, what, what I, st- what I do like about it is, is people still help each other. Right. Right. Like, 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 I haven't seen this in any other sport and in, in a way than drifting, 
even in Germany. Like, you know, like when I broke my gearbox, you know, where I put in uh, at one event, I put it in, in, the, in the messenger. Hey, I just probably gearbox that anybody have one. I have one here. I can, should I go and grab it? I have my spare one. Oh, my car broke down. I'm going to take it out for you. you so you can use it because my car is out already, you know, and, and that, that also showed me, well, no, that, that pushed me more in a way to say, man, we need to do so much more for the sport because the people behind it are actually great people. Right. Mm -hmm. Not everyone knows everything. That's fine. But exactly, you know. But 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 the, but the 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 it's like a family still. Like, however you you like hate each other on the track or on social media or whatever. You know, if someone needs my gearbox and I can't drive, I give it to him. You know, and the same yeah. same way someone gave it to me and I could continue my day, which I really appreciate. Right. And this is uh, this is something something that I wanted to add. Um, that that is uh, that is something to be appreciated, and um, it's, it's a cool thing. I think I think all any of the comments about about it just it comes from a point of like we just want German drifting to get bigger yes. and to get better and 100%. to percent yes. that's yes. it. This yes. is yeah. not this is not to run anyone in the ground. No. This is uh it, it's the frustration, you know, behind the point uh, behind the fact that it's not where it could be, right? Right. Let's 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 make yeah. drifting better in Germany and that that's the that's the whole purpose and that's uh, um it's just not so not so well taken, you know, yeah. in Germany. If yeah. you if you if you want to improve and if you're vocal about it, uh, it's a it, it's a very complicated process. Yeah, and um, a little bit out. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, 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 notorious. But hey, I learned from Rome Rome CP. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for your positivity. I learned from him. Hey, let's not focus on all the negativity. You know. Let's mm -hmm. uh, let's appreciate the fact that we can come together. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. even if we talk about some negative stuff and we're angry about it, but we we have the chance to come together. We have the chance to communicate this to a lot of people. And that is that is fantastic, right? Um, we we all learn every day oh, from gosh. everything we are doing. Yes, let's be happy about that. It's um, and if you look at like like if you look at drifting itself, like I read drifting for example. I've been there uh, last last year with my daughter. Huh? Um, uh, and I mean, how can you not fall in love with this? <laughs> like how? Right. How any anyone from ten years? Like my daughter, she's eleven years old. I mean, she loves cars. She's grown up with this, right? But she's going crazy. Like she has her little headphones, so you know because it's too loud. Like, hey, daddy, look at this! Oh, look at there's fire! And you know, amazing. And she, you know, uh, it's 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 eyes, ears. You taste the rubber, right? The feeling, the arena, the people. Like, how could you not <laughs> fall in love with this? I mean, I get goosebumps, goosebumps talking about it, honestly speaking. You mm -hmm. know, and, 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 and I said it to myself many times, and I don't have to, like, I don't know uh, how you call it, uh, say nice things because, I, you know, whatever, I will need something for yeah. you. I mean, yeah, I mean up. no, no, I don't need to do that. We know each other for 10 years. I mean, Iron yeah. King is, I mean, it's insane. It's absolute crazy. And, and people talking about it. And if you look at some of the, like nowadays in social media, even in the U.S., like even in, in like in Dubai and UAE, hey, I heard about that. Uh, what did they share to me? This crazy drifting thing on an island of metal machines. Like, <laughs> yeah. all right, that's Iron Drifting, you know. And that's so great that's correct. That's exactly yeah. what it is. And, yes. and, and exactly, and it, and it just came a long way. And um, this is why I think also we we should we should push it more and more forward. So the next coming years. God knows how long I'm going to drive. Who knows? Maybe another 10 years, hopefully, maybe 20, whatever. But even if I stop mm -hmm. driving at one, 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 some point, I'll probably, I, I'm definitely going to stay in support and support in, in one way or the other. But God knows where this is going to go, you know, because, mm -hmm. I mean, last year, the last years have been crazy. Last year have been insane. <laughs> I can't even imagine the feeling how it will be to drive myself there. And again, I'm getting goosebumps. I totally just forgot. Yeah, it's the first about, time for you. Just talking about yeah. it. And, you will uh, shit your pants. Yeah. The funny, <laughs> the funny, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, I told, I told my mechanic, I said, you know, here's my plan. We're gonna make sure the car survives till Iron Drifting. Once that event mm -hmm. is finished, we're gonna put it back together with the shovel, right? Yeah. And then yeah. we're gonna put it in a container, ship it to the UAE, and get like a new carbon Kevlar body kit and whatever, because this one's gonna be smashed up. <laughs> so, so um, well, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe you. Hopefully uh, not. I will, I will definitely uh, after that episode. I will give you the contact. Of Olaf, 
you know uh, and so soon i have to anyhow talk more about him man he does so much uh for us he does so much for so many drivers yeah. uh he, he's such a fantastic guy man we since september we have a daily meeting and i mean daily you know and we since september um fantastic guy and i will i will give you his contact if you want to get better contact him you know and and practice with him and i mean it uh, you will you will develop very very yeah. fast. He good. is he is, he is so good at what he is doing, and uh, and what I said earlier, you know, FD champions went to yeah. him for advice. You talk I'm, about you talk about all of Cummins, Colin Cummins. No oh. no no, you don't you don't know him. You don't different know him. A different the, the mysterious and, uh, figure of all. Oh, this, yeah. is the guy, this is the guy we talk about the in one of the other yes. podcasts, right? The uh, mysterious. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Mysterious. Uh, I, yeah, it's it was int the first time him and I like spoke. I mean, as somebody who's analyzed drifting for, I mean, almost ten years now, just staring and staring at drifting. It, it you you start to begin to think you're like I've seen you know I know how this works and like in fifteen minutes you don't know, I was like you don't oh, know nothing I don't know I don't know shit <laughs> like seriously that's that's how long it took and I don't I don't want to like give up who he's working with. Um, if it ever becomes public, that's fine. I don't want to be the guy who does it, but hmm. I'm very curious to see the difference in the drivers he's working with, uh, and how they perform this year. Because yeah. like, I, I know, I know what, what they were like before. Hmm. I'm very curious to see what they're like after. Cause, uh, yeah, it's, uh, shoot me his number myself. Shoot me his number. I need that. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, need I, will, <laughs> I, I will, I will, I will definitely, it's, uh, it's something way more guys should do. You know, uh, he knows yeah. almost too much. He knows <laughs> almost uh, it is very hard to digest sometimes because mm -hmm. because he has figured it out to a level where it first <laughs> definitely doesn't make sense to you, right? And then then he is showing you some graphics and some circles and some, you know, all this and kind of circles, stuff yeah. to, to visualize, to visualize yeah. what he's talking about. And then it starts making sense to you. And it's uh it, it's absolutely fantastic. Um can we call I, him the Doc, we, Doc Brown of Drifting? It's. I don't know how to explain. I don't know how to explain. Back to the future, you know. You know? Yeah. It's. It's more like. Yeah, very it's similar more, character. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Actually, yeah? great guy. Great okay. guy. Like, if if you get on a, I'll tell you right now. If you get on a phone call with him, set aside at least an hour, if not two. Okay. Make sure you have nothing to do for two hours, because <laughs> okay. he'll go and just like, I, honestly, just put a recorder up, just because you're gonna miss about half of it the first time. But wow, yeah, okay. holy shit. Interesting. I, I still out of nowhere, I'll get like 15 messages from him. He's like, hey, I was thinking about something. And then I'll be like, and I'm like, but you need people yep. like that, right? You need yeah. people yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, like 100%. Yeah, yes, that's true. Uh, the, the problem here is that, you know, um, He's Marcel's and no one can have him. That's the problem. Uh, no, 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 it's th those people don't don't get enough credit very often yeah. because because they they are forward yeah. thinking right and forward thinking is means you do something different and if you're vocal about mm. it because you know what you're talking about first you you are seen as an arrogant ass and that is yeah. that's, that's yeah. a huge problem uh, people are not ready to listen and especially when we're talking about commenting on things like written comments right on, on any post uh, i just talked to him about that and i said that i don't even comment anything anymore you know to explain people yeah what i believe is the right way people don't want to have an explanation because no, that no. means they have to rethink what they just did yeah. that means they have to maybe admit they were wrong forget it i'm not wasting my time with this um no but 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 Olaf will get the credit he deserves, definitely. He's he's on his way there. That man has worked so hard for himself. There was, for there you, was no... He no did one, this just for himself. For yeah. himself to figure out how can I master this thing, right? And how can I explain it to people? And, um, and the work yeah. he has been putting in single father and the work he has been putting into this is nuts, really. Well, it's... Um, We'll, it's, we'll get him on. We'll get him on the show at some point. We will point, definitely have yeah, a, a, yeah an eight-hour episode. Yes, so. we'll, we'll need like full <laughs> visual aid. We're gonna need like like 
you know, a full whiteboard so he can just yes. go yes, some exactly, videos. Yeah. It's but nice. yeah, uh, but it's it's good in the same way that like it we figures like this have come in and out of drifting for years, right? Where somebody has taken a bit of knowledge or a skill or an ability or a part or something and and cause us to rethink. I mean, if you look at uh, I always I always kind of feel bad for always just bringing it down to, to FD stuff, but like FD has these eras of of driving and it's usually mm -hmm. based on a driver that's done something that no one else has done. Daigo Saito oh. came over. It was like the horsepower wars. No one had 1200 horsepower and everyone had to oh, yeah. rethink what they knew about yes. drifting. Right. Yeah. And now 1200 horsepower is kind of the standard. Everybody's at a thousand, but all of them can go up to 1200 without a problem. Dean Carney's at like 14. Then it was, you know, James Dean came over and we had to rethink how we chase because he read the rule book and realized, <sighs> oh, it's just about proximity. So he shaved 20% of his angle and basically just planted Smart. his wheel right on there. This he read the rule book and went, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is, there's a spot here for yeah. this technique and they can't tell me I'm wrong because it's in their rule book. Smart driving. And that's what I'm going to do. Smart driving. Yeah. But, but you know, about, talking about horsepower, don't you think that these things become uh, like undrivable rocket ships by now? Oh, hundred percent. Right. But. They are they are for a bit until we figure out something else mm. to make them drivable again. Mm. It's just you you kind of have to like it's it's almost like like you you buy your first house and it's you know a uh, uh, hundred square meters and you buy things and you can't fit anymore mm. and it's you, living in that place is is, yeah. is not great. Yeah. And then you buy the next place and you're like oh look at all the room until you yeah. fill it full of shit. It's yeah. like your driveway with cars like, or your garage with cars. Like, like when you look at I think. When you look at FD, sometimes yeah. sometimes when they like when they transition, it's like a slingshot. It's like the cars have grip oh, yeah. up so much. Where you think like, my God, no, how, how a, can you drive it's, this? It's, it's, it's actually they have less grip than uh, European cars. Really? France. It's yes, the, yeah. Well, they, the have mechan is, they have yeah, mechanical, the mechanical grip. Uh -huh. the, yeah. the, the tire grip is not so much, but it's a driving technique. I will tell you after. The, okay. How about you just call Olaf? It's a it's a it's a driving technique. Uh, R Rome has been uh, uh, showing this technique to me. Um, mm -hmm. we, we met mm -hmm. in February in, uh, in Sweden for, for ice drifting, and he showed it to me. Incredible! Never, I've never even it, seen that before. Yeah. You know, the, and uh, this is this is sensational. And, and there are some drivers who do this very differently. He showed me different ways. You know, yeah. And it, you cannot believe how this works. It's uh, and it's a very simple thing to do, uh, but you need to know how to use it. You know, when to do it. Blah blah blah. The, but um, the, yeah. the interesting it's thing, like the interest loading a spring. Okay. That's the best way I can explain. Okay. You're, you're yeah. using the car and the momentum as a spring, uh -huh. and as you get the car close to your transition point, that you kind of it without getting into like all the details, you're putting the weight into the car, and then as you transition, you release the weight exactly. through the mechanical yes. grip, and it yeah. fires the car into uh -huh. the next zone. Okay. It's fucking wild. It, it, and like it, it being is, in the car is, the first yeah. time, you're like, oh, like it. You accelerate. You, you you accelerate so fast out of transition. It, it, it doesn't even it doesn't even make sense what? that the car that is already you know having no grip because of you know spinning tires, uh, yeah. or having less grip, can suddenly accelerate Go faster. It, it, it makes no sense in my head. Okay. Still not. I still don't yeah. really get it. And for me, it's something magical that I cannot <laughs> explain. I, I got. It was explained to me. I don't understand the physics. How, why this happens? I don't get it, man. Oh, yeah. But it def definitely works, and uh, it, it's fantastic. I thought I thought that they are so gripped up that when you get out, when you're transitioning and you get out of drift once you straightened, that it's so gripped up that it slingshots forward. That's what I it thought. Kind of is. It's you're, uh, yeah. you're close, but it's it's more or less using. Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. But Basically, as the car is as the car is loading, you find the point where the load is is balanced. So the car is at angle, but you're still you have this spring that you're basically holding. Okay. And then when you go to transition, you you unload the spring really quickly and it fires off. And then you are catching the spring on the other side with your hand almost, mm -hmm. which is kind of the rear end of the car, the mm -hmm. grip kit. And then you load that spring again through that transit like through that corner and then transition out. Whereas in in a lot of European drifting, because the tires are so sticky, you don't need to do that. Uh -huh. That once you get into the corner, the car is very balanced and flat. Whereas if you watch like high speed footage of a lot of the best one to look at is like the RTR cars because it's so 
visual, I'm you evil. see the front end come up and yes. that's literally them, them building potential energy in the car. And then when they come off the throttle, even a little bit, that front end comes down and that literally is pushing the car forward. Not wow. every car is like this. Forrest Wang doesn't really use this technique, but the guys who are getting these crazy speeds out of the cars and these crazy transitions, they're the ones that are using it. And it's kind of like uh, the uh, the meta is is what I don't know if that. But, once, but that, 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 that makes crazy transmissions as a chaser. For, oh, it, it's, it's so hard it's, to chase. No, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, but, but you need to you need to time it right. Otherwise, you shoot just in the other car. Exactly. Yeah, you hit the yeah. other guy. I'm, I'm by yeah, by the so. way, I'm I'm going to be in Irvendale this year. Really? Are you? Uh, oh, sweet. Uh, yeah, it's a, a first time. I have been in Irvendale, but just for like some hoonigan stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it was Long Beach around 2019, and then we have been there. But uh, I can't wait to see to see <sighs> Formula Drift, you know, in Irvendale. And um, yeah, I just wanted to yeah, uh, because we it. were talking about you know. Oh. high speed tracks and stuff and uh, I'm really looking forward to be there I'm actually there with my family yeah. my daughter wanted to see FD well. and I was like hey, how about you yeah. you have fall vacation how about we just fly and, yeah. you know, and usually my wife is not on board with those 8.30 in the morning Sunday ideas oh. and yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. with, but with this really that, that's oh. what it was it was 8.30 yeah. Sunday morning and, uh, and, and, th and th in this time she was like Oh yeah, that would be great. And I said, okay, let's give us five hours of calming down about it. And if we still want to go, because <laughs> it's still a lot of money, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, and then we just booked it. So we're going nice. to be there. Nice, nice. Congratulations, yeah. raising a good Congratulations. one. Congratulations. Yeah. I, 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 wanted, I wanted to go to. I wanted to go to Long Beach, but you know, the, not, well, we have just so much work to you do. Got a car to build. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not. The, you know, the small building it, but still, we're so busy. And then Federico said, no, said no, come to Atlanta. Um, so we can talk about our project as well a little bit more. But then it's also very soon in May. So that's just a couple of days after our first uh, practice practice day. So it's going to be tough. Um, but Jacob, what would you say which FD event is the one to go? The first FD event. I've never been, so it's, uh, it's a big thing. It's Honestly, it's either Atlanta or Irwindale. Really? Like, so I thought, yeah, I, I, thought long... you, I thought you'd say Long Beach. I thought. So for a true drifting enthusiast, for, for people like us who like have been around it, what you want is like the feeling, like the nostalgia, like, like there, there's a, I'm getting, I'm literally getting goosebumps yeah. thinking about it. <laughs> I love that. Um, there is a, there is a feeling at Atlanta, like at Atlanta and a feeling at Irwindale that I, I can't put my finger on, but like the fan base is super knowledgeable. They're very dedicated mm -hmm. and you can almost feel like the history there. And I think that's what it is because, you know, we know for somebody who's like brand new to drifting, Long Beach is sick. Like if I have to bring somebody, like if I wanted to like almost like impress my dad, right. Who's not like a big drifting fan. I'd be like, Hey, I'm going to take you to Long Beach. Cause like all these other road race cars are there. And like, it seems really crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for the feeling, there's nothing like how the crowd like gets gets excited at those two venues okay. everybody that's there is very knowledgeable about drifting i'm not saying they're not at other venues but like those two in particular mm -hmm. and then the track is nuts at both of them the layouts are always crazy fast they're both very dynamic and some of the biggest moments in fd's history have happened at those two okay. tracks interesting so yeah i i after that i utah is very quickly growing on me the fan base is really good there. The track is nuts. It's a cool location. It's stunning. It's beautiful oh, well. there. Not a bad photo comes out of that track. Um, and then after that, I would probably say Seattle. Okay. Uh, same thing. The bank is huge. It's similar to Irwindale. It's crazy fast. The track is super rough. So it's like, it's almost, it's that event is more about who can keep tires on their car than anything else, wow. which like just adds a different dynamic. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, New Bristol. Jersey's cool. It's small, not small my track. favorite yet. Yeah, small track. Yeah, small track. Like it's neat because you're like almost in a, a kind of a stadium like, feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, Orlando's just sketchy and old, so it's like, okay. and, and the weather usually sucks. Like Florida weather is just a whole other thing. Mm. At least, so, no, at least no income tax anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then like St. Louis is neat, but it's 
I, it's just not like the old layout was great. The new layout just doesn't have me as excited. So it's, yeah, it's, so Atlanta is a good thing. Uh, I need to think about that. If you can make it to Atlanta, especially Actually, especially if you're going to go see FedEx because yeah, the shops yeah. right around the corner. Yeah, exactly, that's what he told me. Yeah. You, you could go drifting at, at Lanier, which is right there. Like that's if you can make it happen, man. You, yeah. Also, let me know if you do. Yeah, for, but, uh, for sure. Yeah. That's that's that would be my bet. Yeah, what, you'll like it. When is Road Atlanta? Uh, May fifth, uh, five, six, seven. Yeah, May. Uh, you know, come exactly. on, like, like, should be like you that. Like, you, 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 you talk Bro. about you talk about it three minutes. I'm like. Should I just fly there? <laughs> you know, like I, I'm not even. I don't even. I don't even think about not doing that. No. It's, it's just like. Yeah. It's just yeah, like man. Why it's bad in, in the similar, like in the similar way, like yeah. like to bring it back to Iron Drift King. There is a feeling at Iron Drift King that that reminded me. Like I think it's just like how the proximity is, like how people are around you, and like just where it is feels yeah. so special that it just it adds something to the event that's. Yeah. That's so different than anywhere else. So nice. that's, I guess, the best way I can explain uh, it. But Very knowledgeable people, yeah. cool layout, something that's For different. Sure. Ah, know, layout, just, huh, Marcel? I, layout. I, I, yeah. yeah, we're going to have a new one, man. Yeah. I know, I, yeah, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out as, how. As but, if, as if uh, it wasn't yeah. fast enough. By the way, Marcel, before I forget it, I'm going to throw it in here. Jacob, is, is, uh, he's going to listen to it as well. If you come with me to, if you come with me to Atlanta, we'll go. <laughs> Oh, my wife is going to kill me, man. She's um, going to kill you. Good friends, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. what is it, 5th or 6th May? Five, I just said open here on my computer. Let's see. Wait, it's still open. Wow. Um, it is... Uh, <laughs> no, hold on. Sorry. May 11th till 13th. Okay. Road to Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. And uh, Fred's yeah. uh, shop is around the corner, exactly. And then we can uh, go visit him and talk so, about uh, so, some of the stuff. So is, is Atlanta the main airport to go to? Yeah, but the track's about 45 minutes away. So yeah. you need a rental oh, oh my car God. or something to pick up. Uh, we, get a, we, get a, we get a nice Corvette <laughs> or, or something. <laughs> this, okay. I hope you do. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Uh, convertible Mustang, something, some, some very American, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's, uh, very American. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's three days. Right, three days. Is it three days? Yeah. yeah. It, well, and the nice thing about Road Atlanta is Prospect is running too. Better. So that's like one of the big benefits is you're going to get to see both levels of it. Mm. Um, that, you know, I mean, that's like one of the the things you don't get that in Irwindale. Oh, okay. So interesting. And Road Atlanta. Fun fact: You talked about the first place you ever pulled a handbrake. Did it? Road Atlanta was the first place I ever pulled, no pulled a handbrake. Less. Yeah, that's why. Like in the old, like in the old thing, I had Road Atlanta in the background. <laughs> first time I ever drifted was <laughs> at Grid Life, Sorry. and uh, yeah, uh, that was scary. Very, Very yeah, scary. yeah, yeah. Right uh, I, 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 it is scary. I still, it, it's, my, it's the video of, of myself is on YouTube. If you look at the onboard, yeah. you're gonna fucking you're gonna laugh it's hilarious <laughs> anyway I'm, uh, Marcel you're gonna the, you're, you're getting red, I, I will, red he's sweaty and everything he's booking flights I will give this a few days and okay. then I will ask my okay. wife okay <laughs> okay <laughs> Okay. I just, you know, you know, but this I is, ask a lot. I ask a lot of of, of my wife, man. It's um, I'm, I'm returning. Not an easy I'm, guy I'm, to be with. I'm returning the favor. No pressure, Marcel. You got the car. Yeah. It's just about the driver. Mm -hmm. You got the idea. Mm -hmm. It's just about oh the car. The, prob the problem is that drifting is is my job, right? And I, I do that. I do that for a living, and so. It's kind it's of an trip, educational then. trip, right? It's a business it's a, trip. But you have to it think. Is, it is a business trip. Yes. I don't even have, but it's. And you have okay. to think about it. You know, you know, rent a car. You know, we can share is cheaper. You know, we can even share hotel room is cheaper. Flights are like 700 euros. not expensive. I just checked it already. I, I rather, I rather, I rather care about the time that I'm gone again. That's, yeah. uh, that's, the, that's the issue. Yeah. Uh, you know. Five days. Okay. Yeah, five days, huh? Could be. So five days. Could be a family if, I, trip. if I tell this to Marcus. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow, because he anyhow planned to be in the US. We yeah. be book flights on Monday, man. Oh. Just let me know. I'll, okay, I'm in. I will, yeah, I, oh. I will. Let, I will let you know. Oh, I love peer pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Cool. cool. Oh, well, Jacob is going to be cool. there. You're going to be there, right? I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. you'll be there. Yeah, he's going to be. I'll be, an, I'll be working, right? so I might be a bit busy. Yeah. but I'll be there. Yeah. 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 I prospect off. I'm not announcing prospect, so okay, it'll, it'll be fine. I got lots of time. Very cool. Yeah. Maybe we can we can we can we can have a diet coke or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, cool, awesome. I'll take you. I'll, yeah, well, we'll, yeah, go, we'll, we'll go get, get tattoos. That's like the thing to do. Oh we'll no, no, go no, get a no problem. No? <laughs> yeah, let's go, man. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. We're ready. Marcel is gonna get one too. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah, that would be ideal. That would, that would be ideal. Oh you know, you're gonna come back. You're gonna have one in your face. Hey, I'm flying. I'm flying to the US for for five for five days, and then come back with a tattoo. You yeah, know? it's perfect. Drift yeah, line. fantastic. I yeah. I don't know what the problem is well, here. I, I haven't I haven't I didn't figure out either. No, I'm I'm getting mean, anxiety. Like Let, let's let's stop <laughs> talking about it. Like it's. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I have fine. so much going on every day, awesome. and uh, yeah. so I'm just happy that my wife is still with me. You know, after all yeah. these years of craziness, <laughs> I'm asking. I'm not sure. I'm asking myself every day, feeling. like, how is that possible? But somehow, I don't know. I, yeah, I'm a hundred and hundred and forty days gone from the house this year, yeah. and I said to my wife, Ooh, "I'm like, that's, you're that's, basically like a part-time single mother," and she's yeah. like, "Well, oh, okay, no, yeah, no, it's okay. We're good. My kids are coming on a bunch of trips. We're cool. going to take them to that's a couple cool. rounds. Yeah, yeah. there's a." Cool. Uh, I can't. I can't talk about it yet. There's a couple of big changes going on to uh, make that a little easier. Nice. All good stuff, though. Very, very All good cool. stuff. Yeah, very, very cool. Yeah, very cool. Uh, cool. Nice. Well, I we're we're Don't, getting real close to two hours. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 We have to wrap. We have <laughs> yeah. to wrap it up. Uh, even okay. if I and it's gonna be like midnight. To be fair. Yeah. It's gonna be midnight in Germany, right? Yeah. Now, it's, so. it's, uh, yeah. It's 11 p.m. in uh, in in Germany, and it's uh, midnight in in Finland. Yeah. Yes. But I, I, yes. Can, I can do this gotcha. all day, man. It's so so nice. It's so yeah. nice. so fun with, fun with you guys. You know, it's easy. Yeah. Just, like, it's... Talking to you. You know. Very cool. Yeah, it's good having you on, man. Very I'm, cool. I'm excited. I'm excited to meet you in person. I mean, that's that's the hard part for me. It's like you know. Oh, stop it. Stop it. No, stop it. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> can, 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 can you tell me again? Ah, oh, stop it. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, cool. Uh, I'm not, I, hey, look, I'm new to this, like, being famous thing. It's weird. I'm still working it out. I'm still weird with it. So, uh, check I, but I do, have, I do have, appreciate have you, it. Have you ever been driving, like, fast, fast on the road? Yeah. Yeah. Like, legally or illegally? No, nah, this doesn't. That 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 was not the question. Because maybe otherwise, friends, maybe you could bring something fun and you could go on on, oh. the, on the German autobahn together for ah. for twenty minutes or something. I haven't been oh. I haven't been driving that fast. No problem. Before. No problem. Was yeah, it like, was like, like was 160, it in, 170 uh, miles, something 200, 200 like this. miles. Two hundred miles. Two hundred miles. Okay. Do you have something All that right. can do that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No problem. <laughs> so. Was it two hundred miles? Three hundred thirty kilometers an hour. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I did. So I did three thirty four two days ago. So I can't do it. Yeah. Okay. Ah, Jesus. Yeah. All right. The, well, ro- the road we'll goes like this, started. Jacob. Just like yeah. just this narrow <laughs> thing, and then if it, and if it's I dark, bet you it does real quick. And if it's dark, yeah. it's even more fun. Trust me. And if you close your eyes, it's even <laughs> really better. And so. if you do it like that, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Well, Amazing. it sounds like a date to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th- thank you both for doing this. I'm glad, uh, glad we got it all sorted. Oh, thanks. Um, thank you for, for having me. Really, really amazing. Yeah, dude. No, happy to. For everybody listening and watching at home, thank you for uh, for subscribing. Please take everything that we've we've said here. Try and take something from it. Do something actionable with it. If you're if you're you know been drifting for a long time, please hand down some knowledge. Educate people. If you're new to drifting, please ask questions and learn and be respectful. We all all we're trying to do here. All we want is the sport to grow. Absolutely. That's it. We just want drifting to get bigger. That's the whole reason we're doing this. And yeah. Try and yeah. take something from it. Thank you guys for coming on. Thanks for doing this. This is a blast. I haven't laughed this hard in forever. Yeah, I just want to say something also at the end. So um, I hope everyone who who heard us also saying negative stuff, you know, being 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 very uh, criticizing. Um, I hope I hope all of you out there understand that this is pure passion, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, and if you guys want to see how passion looks in the form of a drifting event, you come to the Iron Drift King. I can. Just not because I do the event. I, I I can highly recommend it as a fan of the sport. You know, mm-hmm. I'm I'm genuinely excited for drifting in general and the atmosphere. I, I, come to me if you if you if you didn't feel it, I will give you your money back. That is, well, man. I, I no, you cannot not feel it. You cannot yeah. not Word, feel it. It's uh, it's impossible. Words cannot right? describe. Words cannot yes. describe. I, I also think that it's a generally wave of emotion and sensation, and and that's uh, and that's why I love doing that. Yeah. You know, it's it's fantastic. And um, in a weird way, I yeah. want to cry thinking but, about it. I don't know why. <laughs> that's like, yeah. in a weird hey, way. Hey, in a weird way. It's an open space. Go for it. I'm not gonna. I'm not here to judge you, but I know. I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 It's, no, really, it is. Really, it's amazing. Like, wow. yeah. I, just, I can't wait. Yeah. I just can't wait to be there. Yeah. I, mean, even, I just can't wait to be part of it. Very proud. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We'll, we'll do our best and uh, 
to give everyone the show and, and to support the sport of drifting. Um, uh, let's hope to, to do, we can do some crazy, amazing and great things all together. Uh, Jacob. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. Really a fan, man. I, I, I know all the podcasts oh, and everything you. and I know your voice. Like, you know, my wife knows your, my, my girlfriend, <laughs> she knows your voice as well when she's sleeping next to me and I watch Formula Drift as well. So, um, no, yeah. really cool. I'm not going to touch that joke. <laughs> 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 that was a good, uh, that was a good one. Um, um, no, but uh, yeah, Marcel, I'll uh, speak to you soon. I need the number of, uh, you know, right? Yes. Yeah, Olaf. Yeah, the guy. And yes, um, exactly, it was yeah. amazing. Can't wait for the next podcast to, to see who you guys are going to get on here and uh, absolutely amazing. That's all I can say. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Franz. Thank you for taking time and uh, thank you for supporting drifting. Anytime. Yeah. It's uh yeah. that's fantastic. Thank that's you guys. I had a that's great a time and now it's midnight officially here. So <laughs> we'll, have a good we'll night. Catch everybody everyone. Uh, yeah. That's thank it. you. Drift Island, the Iron Drift King podcast, hosted by Marcel Uli and Jacob Gettens.